What's happening friends, or welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick and on this channel I talk about cryptocurrency, decentralized finance, and economics. Today's video is about Tron. Tron is a layer one that's been getting a lot of attention recently. And so today I'll go through exactly what Tron is, why it's been getting so much attention, a bit about their stablecoin, USDD, which plays a lot into their recent narrative, and then also some other important things to know about the Tron ecosystem. And before I go any further, I want to emphasize that nothing I say is financial advice. You should still, of course, do your own research before investing or deciding not to invest in any sort of asset. Let's get into the video. So first thing to understand is exactly what Tron is. Tron is a layer one. It came out of the last bull market, so it was... It was initially launched towards the end of 2017, and it has Solidity smart contracts. So those are some interesting things right there because as I said in my video last week that related to the Lindy effect, it is always a good sign when a project was already able to survive a bear market and return. And Tron was definitely more of the rage back in the previous bear market. You could consider the narrative around it then similar to the narrative around some of these other layer ones that became popular in 2021 if you weren't around in 2017 but but that's how people a lot of people viewed tron back then and then it didn't get quite as much hype compared to other layer ones in 2021 but then it's really had a resurgence over the past couple months and so that's what tron is some other things that are interesting is the founder of tron justin sun also acquired BitTorrent, which was around for a long time, even before cryptocurrency existed, and in a way integrated it into Tron, even though it has its own chain. It's branded as the first scalable, heterogeneous, cross-chain interoperability protocol on Tron. So it is, in a way, part of the Tron ecosystem. And my understanding is there's also a number of apps and games on Tron that are targeted towards the East Asian market. So they're not as widely used in the west and another thing that's interesting about tron is that a lot of the usdt supply is actually on tron that's not widely known but but about 30 to 40 million dollars of usdt actually exists on tron rather than ethereum and that's because a lot of people use it to transfer between exchanges and my understanding is that exchanges often use tron to settle transactions tron usdt i mean to settle transactions because it's cheaper than making transfers on Ethereum. So that's something else that is sort of a network effect that Tron has. But those aren't the reasons why it's been doing well recently, actually. So recently, since the start of this year, you can see that the price has definitely outperformed the overall market since it's close to its highest point that it's been since January. The highest point was before the Terra crash in May, and then it's it's recovered quite a bit since then, but it, but it's had this nice uptrend. And if you look at the TVL, then you can see the TVL also increased substantially over the past month. So this is the total value locked in DeFi projects on Tron, of which there are about eight, really more like six active projects right now. So, so total, they have about $6 billion in TVL locked into the Tron ecosystem now. And if you look at Tron scan, here you can see that the transaction count has also been going up. So the transaction counts peaked last summer. I'm not sure what was going on last summer because that's a really large spike, but the transaction counts peaked then and then have been steadily climbing really since October of last year. So at that point, that is, that is what about eight months. And just to zoom in a bit more, you can see that, that this has grown even from say March, it was around 3 million up to on some days getting over 5 million now. And that's to me one sign of strength for a layer one because more transactions means that more people are using the network and 5 million transactions to put it in perspective, Ethereum mainnet does about 1 million transactions a day. So this is doing about 5 million. Granted, not all transactions are created equal. So Networks with cheaper fees tend to have less valuable transactions, but 5 million is not an insignificant number of transactions. And so why is this happening, right? Like I hinted at earlier 
A lot of this comes from the fact that Tron launched their USDD stablecoin really the start of May. So isn't that a coincidence? It's the same time that UST Luna collapsed and not very good timing because USDD was launched with a similar algorithmic model to UST and Luna. So if you recall, UST could be burnt to mint Luna and Luna could be burnt to mint UST. The model with USDD, which I believe stands for USD decentralized, I'm not 100% sure. And the model with USDD and TRX, which is the Tron token, was similar. So, so that's how it would balance out algorithmically. And despite the fact that UST had just collapsed, USDD has already managed to grow to almost $700 million in market cap. How about that? And the reason for this is that the interest rates on it are quite good. So if we go over to Tron DeFi on Sun.io, you can see that if you pair it with USDT, you earn between 20 and 21%. And if you pair it with USDT and TUSD, that's true USD, you earn around 20%. So both of those are good, slightly better than Anchor on Terra was. And similarly, you can lend it out on Just Lend. And here you can lend out USDD for around 16%, which is also very nice on stable coins. I will caveat this with saying, as many people have probably heard me say before, if you watch this channel, I'm not a fan of stablecoin farming because to me the the risk reward doesn't make sense, but but that's basically why it's been attracting so many people, right? There's $440 million of USDD on just lend out of $670 million in total circulation. So that's about two thirds of the supply is just on this one application. And this is a large part of the reason why Tron TVL and Tron price have been increasing recently. One thing that's important to note is that in response to the UST collapse, USDD did upgrade its design. And this, this uh, headline here is kind of a press release, but basically it does get at the truth, which is that they over collateralized it. So the Tron DAO reserve, which is which is, I guess, responsible for the USDD stablecoin, purchased additional collateral. So you can think of this like the BTC backstop that Terra, Terra, Terra had purchased or the Luna Foundation Guard, I believe. And basically it's the same idea as that, except that they actually purchased enough, enough BTC and other assets to more than make up for the market cap of USDD. And if we go down here and look at the reserves, you can see they have about $836,000 of reserves right now. So 14,000 Bitcoin, 240 million USDT and 1.9 billion TRX. In this collateralization ratio, if you're wondering why it's so high, basically they're counting the TRX burnt as part of that collateralization ratio. You can argue about whether that makes sense to include, but regardless, the reserves are more than the total market cap of USDD, which is around 670 million. And so that's basically what's going on with Tron. As far as risks to getting involved in this ecosystem, I do see a number of them. And I want to make sure that I, I call those out just so that people are getting the full picture. The first is that their reserves here include a number of volatile assets. So BTC and TRX are a large majority of the total reserves. And so what would happen if the price of these decreased? The reserves could, in theory, be worth less than the total USDD supply. So that is definitely one thing to watch out for. As you recall, the Luna Foundation Guard was forced to sell their BTC near the bottom because, because to try to backstop the peg, and they were unsuccessful, and they lost their BTC. So, so that is something to seriously consider. Another thing that, to me, is a risk is that if you look at the DeFi protocols, there's actually, they haven't been able to attract a huge ecosystem to fight the, despite the fact that they've been around for a while. And if you look at these, you have Just Lend, Just Stable, SunSwap, SunIO. That's basically all the TVL. These are all named after the founder, right? Justin, Justin Sun is his name. So to me, that sort of implies that these all either are affiliated or have some sort of tangential affiliation with, with the organization running Tron. And and that concerns me that, you know, why aren't there more protocols being built on Tron that have gained adoption? Like we saw with Anchor, it's always a risk to have too much of a layer one's 
of a layer one's TVL dependent on one protocol and especially in one pool on one protocol, like how a lot of Tron's TVL is USDD on just Lend. Some other things to consider are that a lot of the money flowing to USDD right now is largely mercenary. Like we saw with UST, that money can leave even more rapidly than it arrived. So if you want to get involved in Tron, then it is one of the top ecosystems right now. But but be careful that that if money starts to leave, it could leave quickly. So that is something to keep in mind, given what happened with UST. And that's basically what you need to know about Tron and USDD. Let me know what you think about this ecosystem down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitter. And until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.